35. Today is the book Attitude 101 by John Maxwell, where we're going to talk about with this book, and he talks about what every leader needs to know about attitude. So there are some great quick nuggets of information in here that we're going to cover. Number one, a mindset, how your thoughts control your, your feelings and control your attitudes and how to change your attitudes. There is a number of choices that you can make. But I want to point out, this is the third book in this series, this, this book uh, channel that I've reviewed on attitudes specifically. Back in episode nine was Attitude is Everything by Jeff Keller, where we talk about the philosophy of attitude, focusing on things that are positive and how your philosophy actually kind of can change your outcome. And attitude plays a big part in determining that. And last week in The Difference Maker, also by John Maxwell, we talked about how making attitude can be your greatest asset as an employee, as a business owner, and he also covers five ways that your attitude can be hijacked. Most people let things like problems, fear, and failure, um, among others, hijack their attitude. So go check those two book reviews out if you want more information on that. This is going to be a very quick overview of your attitude. So John Maxwell in this book on page uh, 13 defines attitude as an inward feeling expressed by action. So an inward feeling expressed by action. And on page 11 he says most bad attitudes in part are a result of of selfishness. So that's something definitely to be aware of as our attitudes are, are really within our control, which is the second thing I want to share with you guys. So we're going to talk a syllogism here in just a second, but we're also going to talk about hamburgers, so it's okay, right? <laughs> a syllogism is just merely a logical way to construct an argument. There's two premises and a conclusion, but we're going to talk about hamburgers along with it, so, so we're good, right? <laughs> anyway, here's our major premise. We can control our thoughts. And here's where we talk about hamburgers. So think with me about the best hamburger you've ever had. If it was, if it was just medium well, there was a little bit of pink on the inside, it was juicy, maybe there was cheese. I love pepper jack cheese. You might like provolone. There was probably there was bacon on it, lettuce, tomato. There's that spicy mustard and one of those um, pretzel buns, man, those are awesome. Or maybe you like a brioche bun, whatever it happens to be, you can think of a really good hamburger. Now pause on, pause on that a second before your mouth starts watering. You are in control of your thoughts. We started talking about hamburgers and immediately you can picture that. You can smell the, the smell coming off the grill. You can imagine yourself sitting out on, uh, on a summer day, getting ready to bite down into that juicy burger. Now, Here's our, our second premise. Our feelings come from our thoughts. Now, if we go back and start talking about that barbecue where there's, there's chips and pop and um, you're able to, to just hang out with family and, and maybe play some yard games and you just, you get, you're swimming around in the pool, but you're really, really hungry. Are you feeling hungry yet? I'm feeling hungry right now. I wish I could go grab a hamburger right off the grill. But because we're thinking about that, our feelings generally follow our thoughts. So our conclusion that we can come to from the syllogism, now that we talked about hamburgers for a minute, did you notice we're still talking syllogism? So major premise, we control our thoughts. Minor premise, our feelings come from our thoughts. So the conclusion, we control our feelings by learning to change how we think. And changing how we think, learning to change how we think is a way that we can indirectly control our attitudes, according to Maxwell here. So how do we do that? He says we need to develop better habits. Now, Paul gives us a great example in the book of Philippians in the Bible, Philippians 4 verse 8. Let me quick read that for you. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, well, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think on these things. Some translations even say meditate on these things. Paul took seriously the idea of filling our minds and our thoughts with things that produce a great attitude. So Maxwell says, um, as far as changing attitude, he gives you eight choices that you can do to change your attitudes. The final 
the second to last one is developing better habits of thought, which we were just talking about. According to Maxwell, you need to understand that you do have bad habits, and I do as well, bad habits of thought, make a goal and replace that bad habit through a process. So I won't get into an entire habits talk, that will be coming with the book, The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg, which is coming up in a couple weeks. So guys, I encourage you to think through your habits and give yourself a lot of credit. You are aware of this where most people, which is why or most people don't think that attitude has anything to do with their outcomes in life. So give yourself a round of applause for, for getting to the end of this video and go check out Attitude 101 for maybe an afternoon's worth of reading. It's only 100 pages and it's a real small book. So this is a great nugget for changing your attitude. Go check out the other two books for more of the deep dive. I will see you guys next week for episode 36. I'm going to be traveling. Not sure if I'll be able to get it up day of, but I will do my best. I'll see you guys next week.